Let's vape. Wait, not that vape. These. So what is a vaporizer? According to Miller, a vaporizer is a closed container that converts a liquid that exists as a liquid at room temperature and atmospheric pressure into a vapor. So tell me more. Characteristics of modern vaporizers are that they are agent specific, that is they are only, only for use with a particular agent, they are variable bypass, that means uh, Variable bypass describes dividing or splitting of the total fresh gas flow through the vaporizer into two portions, and we'll talk more about this later. They're flow over, they're temperature compensated, which means they're equipped with an auto automatic temperature compensating device that helps maintain the constant vaporizer output over a wide range of temperatures. And we'll talk more about this later, and they're out of circuit, as you can see by the picture. So how does it work? Well. The rotation of the dial on the right hand side either restricts or opens the flow of gas allowing more, fret, more or less of the fresh gas flow to pass through the vaporizing chamber. The wicks are saturated with liquid anesthetic and ensure a large gas liquid interface for more efficient vaporization. You can see the wicks are these purple dots on the left hand side and the baffle, baffles off also serve in this purpose and they're the maze looking thing at the bottom. The temperature compensating valve, which is this blue strip right here, it's also called a bimetallic strip, opens or closes to allow more or less gas to bypass the vaporization chamber in order to compensate for any temperature changes that affect the vapor pressure of the liquid anesthetic in the bottom, which you can see is this purple uh, liquid in the bottom. Let's talk about the Tech 6 or D vaporizer. So these have two key differences. They're both heated, uh, which is to 23 to 25 degrees Celsius, and they're pressurized with a back pressure regulator to 1500 millimeters mercury to create an environment in which the anesthetic has relatively lower but predictable volatility. You can also just paraphrase this pressurized portion as two atmospheres of pressure. So use and care for the vaporizers. So we want to avoid tipping, first of all. Tipping of the vaporizers can cause liquid anesthetic to spill from the vaporizing chamber into the bypass chamber with a resultant increase in vapor concentrating, concentration exiting from the vaporizer. If the anesthetic does make it into the bypass channel, this may lead to an anesthetic overdose. The safety interlock device, which you can see at the bottom of our slide, um, ensures that only one vaporizer can be used at a time. Uh, you can see that both of them in the off position, um, the pins are not engaged, whereas in the picture on the right hand side, when the isofluorane is turned on, its pins pop out and lock the sevofluorane pin next to it. Uh, you can also see that the sevo pin pops out to lock the next vaporizer if there were more than two in this uh, diagram or on the machine. The anesthetic vaporizers also use key device fillers. Uh, this prevents placement of a liquid anesthetic into the vaporizing chamber that is different from the anesthetic for which the vaporizer was actually calibrated for. This is uniquely important for desflurane because its vapor pressure is near one atmosphere and accidental placement of desflurane in a contemporary vaporizer could result in an anesthetic overdose. What if I put the wrong gas in the vaporizer? Well, most have filler keys to prevent this, but it still can happen. Uh, as you saw the filler keys on the previous slide. Um, this is where we like to go to the high-low-high high method or low-high-low, low, whichever one you're dealing with. Uh, so you can see the vapor pressures listed here from sevofluorane to desflurane. Uh, they're all different. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, we'll, we'll basically say sevo and influrane are the same and isofluorane and halothane are around the same as well. Um, so if you're placing a sevofluorane into an isofluorane vaporizer, that's going to be a low vapor pressure agent placed into a high, higher vapor pressure 
use only vaporizer, which then will result in a lower than dial output on the actual vaporizer. So with this one, you would need to turn up the dial more than you would actually think because the sevofluorane was placed in the isofluorane vaporizer. Now, uh, if you place an isofluorane in the sevofluorane vaporizer, that's going to result in a higher than normal output than what's actually going to be reflected on the dial, and you would need to adjust this accordingly. So what about elevation change? How is this going to actually affect our anesthetic? Well, according to open anesthesia, at a higher altitude where the barometric pressure is half that at sea level, uh, the amount of isofluorane vapor output de increases due to lower barometric pressure. Therefore, the settings that delivered 2% isofluorane would now deliver 4% isofluorane. However, according to Dalton's law, the partial pressure of isofluorane delivered would be approximately the same at both altitudes since 2% isofluorane at 760 millimeters mercury or sea level if we multiply that out, we get 15.2 millimeters mercury. So keep that number in mind. Now if we have a 4% delivery due to the 380 millimeter mercury barometric pressure at the higher atmosphere, we multiply that 4% times the 380, we get that same 15.2% millimeters mercury. And it's all really about the partial pressure in those alveoli anyway. So technically the same delivery, uh, so our vaporizer is kind of compensating there. Therefore, a variable bypass vaporizer, as we talked about with isofluorane, sevofluorane, halothane, if they still have that, or influorane, which we don't use, um, whose vaporizing pressure is now controlled by a variable orifice at the inlet of the vaporizing chamber, will have an output concentration that is greater than is set on the dial in terms of volume percent, but potency increases by a lesser amount. So does the carrier gas matter? Uh, we all use oxygen, nitrogen, and air in different mixtures accordingly, uh, but does that actually matter? Um, so the carrier gas is of these three pictured here, um, and changing that uh, can actually affect the vaporizer output. Um, so most vaporizers are calibrated using air as a carrier gas, believe it or not. When nitrous oxide and oxygen begin to enter the vaporizing chamber, some nitrous oxide dissolves into the liquid an anesthetic agent, and the vaporizing chamber's output decreases until the liquid agent has become saturated with that nitrous oxide, at which point the vaporizer's output then will increase. When 100% oxygen is used, the output concentration, when compared with air, increases by 10% of the set value. So how much gas do I need? Well, you can actually find this out uh, with this simple formula right here. You just take the percentage of agent used. So we'll say we're using 2% of sevofluorane um, times the carrier flow rate, and that's in liters per minute. So that's simple because that's what's already on our uh, dial on the flow meter. And we'll say we're using that at 2 liters per minute. We're being responsible providers and cost effective. And we're multiplying that times uh, three, and that will equal the agent we use in milliliters per hour. So if we multiply all those three variables out, we get 12 milliliters per hour of agent. Uh, so that's the actual liquid of SIVO4 in there. Um, that's why it's critical and cost effective to lower those carrier flows. So um, obviously a lower flow rate here would yield a lower amount of agent used, and this was just the equation that shows that. So does temperature affect output? Well, um, it's kind of a, a tricky question. The, var the variable bypass uh, vaporizers are actually temperature compensated, as we talked about early, earlier with that bimetallic strip, but they only work within a certain set temperature range. So they work between 15 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius because as temperature increases, the vapor pressure of the anesthetic increases in a nonlinear manner, whereas the temperature compensation is in linear. 
Indeed, the output may become unpredictable and uncontrolled, but if the boiling point of the agent is reached, um, this can become an issue. Also, if the temperature falls below the specified range for use, in this case 15 degrees Celsius, the output may be unpredictably low. Um, the 15 to 35 degrees Celsius is a range that I gave off of a particular vaporizer, um, and that can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer as well. So these are the resources that I use for this, um, and that is all. Thank you very much.